good afternoon everybody uh, i think it's time to start uh, welcome to our webinar here i am venkatesh co-founder of broker.com we are a marketplace for marketing services for the past few weeks we've been doing these webinars that uh, focus upon digital transformation how brands uh, are moving from offline to online what kind of opportunities there are what kind of possibilities mediums there are and how to use them uh, today we have with us apaksh from one impression uh, apaksh is a friend uh, a Hollywood actor as well. You should talk to him about that sometime in the conversation. Uh, and and uh, is a founder of One Impression. Um, influencer services are possibly the fastest growing services we are seeing on the platform. A uh, lot of action coming on. A lot of small brands trying to explore how influencers can can amplify their message further. Um, it's 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 a wonderful space to be in. Uh, and I now invite Apaksh to talk a little about himself. Uh, and take us through his experiences and his advice on how to set up campaigns uh, with influencer marketing. Apach, welcome and over to you. Hey Venkat, hi, thank you so much for the introduction. Is uh, everybody able to hear Apach? Yeah, it seems so. Great. Great. All right. Apach, please continue. Lovely. Thank you. Uh, thanks everybody for coming in. Uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, join the webinar. Uh, I think Venkat's already given a brief introduction. I'll quickly introduce uh, myself. I'm the founder of Fun Impression. Uh, we started the company uh, about three years ago. We currently work with, uh, work with about 150 odd brands. Uh, again, some of the brands we manage include Amazon, Uber, Paytm, uh, PUBG, Pinterest, so to say. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll uh, quickly take run you through how we look at influencer marketing in the company. I think we're the largest in the space in India. Uh, we currently uh, do we currently transact about uh, three three and a half million dollar of business in the uh, in the company, which is I think the largest uh, in size in the country. Uh, and we operate in about uh, ten odd countries. So we'll, I'll try to take you through how we operate, what we do, how we create magic on influencer campaigns. Uh, I think. As Venkat uh, already mentioned, influencer uh, is one space that we've seen uh, has grown at a rate we've not really and we didn't anticipate ourselves. In fact, due to COVID, we see that we've sort of moved forward by a few years uh, as an industry. So we're one of the blessed few who've really done well uh, at these times. Uh, so I'll, I'll I'll share my screen. I'll run you through uh, my presentation. Just give me a second. Hi guys, uh, Venkat, is my screen visible? Uh, yes, it is, Apash. Go ahead. Okay, great. Uh, guys, well, quickly, uh, take you through the presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, direct them towards Venkat and we'll take them towards the end of the presentation. Uh, so quick introduction into, into uh, firstly, I think the space of social, uh, social media. So currently uh, about three and a half billion people worldwide are uh, using social media platforms. This stat uh, is updated as of 2019. Uh, We've seen influencers evolve in the following trends. So uh, we've seen the evolution from print te to television to digital ads to influencer. I think uh, within the scope of digital influencer is growing at about 40% year on year uh, as a CAGR. So it's, uh, it's the fastest growth I think any services or any digital medium has seen uh, lately in the past few years. Uh, so I think a couple of key stats about the platforms that are uh, that are major in India, uh, Instagram being the core platform where I think the whole influencer marketing ecosystem evolved. Uh, so currently for India, about a hundred, uh, about a hundred seventeen odd million active users, uh, about forty five minutes of uh, daily average time spent by every user. Uh, we see a huge purchase likelihood by the people using Instagram. So about about 63% odd people uh, on Instagram uh, are likely to make a purchase. And uh, and again, I think uh, it has about 27% women users. Women users are very uh, core to, uh, I think, more, most platforms because uh, they're also decision makers in for a lot of categories, including FMCG, fashion, et cetera, beauty, so on and so forth. And these categories are highly impacted by, uh, by influencers. Uh, 
similarly for youtube so in the last two years i think as when the company started we were largely an inf- uh, an instagram company ourselves uh, over the course of time uh, we saw some youtube uh, requirements starting to pop in uh, we started looking at youtube i think more aggressively then uh, and we realized over i think the last two years that uh, youtube has now sort of become more dominant for us as a company even even more so than instagram so about 45% of our entire business uh happens on youtube influencers about uh, 35 to 40 odd percent happens on instagram uh the rest happens uh, on tiktok uh so for youtube about 245 million monthly active users about 52 minutes of uh, average uh, daily time spent uh tiktok lately i'm sure is a talk of the town so interestingly we were the second company in india that tiktok started working with when they when they entered india uh as musically uh back then i think tiktok had no presence in india whatsoever as musically and from there to becoming a rage today we've seen that entire journey so uh, bytedance for us is a major client spends a few million dollars a year with us uh tiktok's become tiktok has become huge i think uh, india uh, being the largest user base uh, they saw unprecedented growth in this uh, in the last quarter as well uh the latest stats uh, for tiktok are they have over 80 million monthly active users uh more than 36 minutes of average daily time spent uh there's a very uh, there's a massive young audience on the platform so about 46% people between the age of 15 to 24 and uh, tiktok largely being a video platform uh so about 350 billion monthly views generated on the platform which is massive some of the some of the campaigns on tiktok uh, i don't know if you've seen but have uh independently garnered over a few billion views uh alone in the hash if you if you uh, follow the hashtag trending area uh in the platform uh, i'll talk more about each platform later but uh, for now i'll uh, i'll keep uh, jumping to uh, the slide and then i think we'll we'll take it uh, as per questions i trust there's a lot of discussion around tiktok that some of you might uh, might want to have even around youtube uh so i think Pinterest is another huge platform that we don't see currently being major in India from a brand perspective, but gaining, uh, which is gaining a huge traction. So about forty odd million monthly active users uh, on the Pinterest platform, which is growing. Uh, about fourteen minutes average daily time spent. Uh, the interesting fact about Pinterest is that it that it has a huge, uh, humongous women audience. So about fifty five percent of the users are women, uh, and uh, and I think the other interesting stat is that. most of the users live in uh, top metro city so pinterest in that sense is a very uh, premium platform with people who have a high purchase intent and have a high paying uh, capacity so for a lot of uh, for a lot of food brands fashion brands travel brands uh, uh, luxury brands uh, anything to do with inspiration uh, uh, home decor uh, pinterest becomes a very uh, critical platform so uh so interestingly uh, one impression is the only southeast uh, southeast asia partner uh, for pinterest uh we're building influencers with pinterest uh, on their platform about about 200 odd influencers on their platform uh the I, uh, we've also as part of the partnership started to onboard a lot of brands on their uh, on the pinterest ecosystem so we'll see how that evolves but uh, uh, but i think in the next few months you'll see pinterest becoming one of the key platforms in uh, in the social strategy for most brands uh so some interesting facts about influencer marketing in general uh so i think uh, you know uh, I, i i trust a lot of you would relate to this uh, millennials uh, 70% of them uh, trust influencers more than celebrities so uh, celebrities and influencers largely work a little differently in the sense that celebrities are a great way uh, to you know reach out to the masses but in terms of trust uh, the lower you go down the pyramid the the more the trust the more you connect uh, i personally just have over a thousand followers on instagram but again very engaged community uh, anything that i think i post about uh, it leads to huge conversations sometimes even transactions that i've personally seen uh, amongst my friends so i think that's essentially the power of what micro influencers can do uh, women again 86% of use uh, social media before they make a purchase uh most of the categories like so so one of the biggest categories we've seen impacted by influencers is beauty and fashion beauty even more so so beauty as a uh as a huge uh, beauty is a huge industry right I, I, you you'd all know that there are thousands of brands within beauty and hundreds more that are cropping up every year 
uh, and and they all seem to be growing uh, just because of the sheer size of the industry and we've seen that beauty as an industry can lead uh, can there are companies who are purely built on 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 influencer marketing in the beauty category it is such a heavy uh, it has such a heavy impact on the purchase likelihood of uh, women within the category uh, again uh, research says roi uh, on influencer campaigns on an average is about 6 and 1/2 dollars for every dollar spent but we've seen it ranging between 3 dollars to about 11 or dollars depending on categories and depending on brands and uh, the life cycle of the brand uh, again if you if you check google trends you will see for the past few years that influencer marketing search has surpassed print marketing search uh, and also in terms of uh, uh, in, in spending in certain countries influencer marketing is already more dominant than print marketing is owing to how uh, it engages people and owing to the fact that how content uh, can be uh, in in form of a video as opposed to just a print ad uh, i'll put i'll uh, put together some details on how uh, influencer marketing campaigns come together so i think the first part to understand uh, within within influencer marketing is uh, how influencers are structured so influencers uh, are, are are broken down into multiple categories uh, we have about 68 odd categories in the companies some of the more uh, important ones are listed here uh there are influencers in the entertainment space so tiktokers are largely entertainers in 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 most sense there are influencers in the motorcycling space so we work with a brand called java motorcycles we collaborate with tons of influencers who uh who talk about motorcycling repairing of a motorcycle life cycle of a motorcycle so on and so forth gaming is a huge industry so we're doing a campaign with pubg right now if some of you uh, uh my, some of you Uh, might have seen uh, some of the recent pubg content coming out with celebrities that has been done by us if i don't know if you follow mpl gaming we do tons of stuff with mpl gaming but gaming as a category uh, we've seen is one of the uh, is one of the again highly impacted categories by influencers we've seen gaming to be impacted more uh, on the youtube platform as opposed to any other platform uh you you'll see tons of gaming companies especially real money gaming uh, lately Uh, to be doing tons of stuff on youtube uh technology is a huge category so we manage campaigns for companies like panasonic where and we do reviews for ac we we do unboxing of new products so on and so forth uh memes interestingly has picked up as a category so a lot of brands are uh, currently engaging in memes and becoming a subtle part of the uh, conversation amongst most uh, groups as opposed to taking uh you know an approach of a more traditional approach of uh, going with their uh, key categories but taking a very uh, funny or a humorous take uh, of the industry uh, so memes we have seen has become a whole different uh channel a whole marketing ecosystem in itself uh there are influencers who are founders there are influencers who are chefs we we we're doing something with nescafe gold right now if some of you seeing we uh, we doing something with ma- uh, with chefs uh, with some of the top chefs uh, conducting master classes uh, on how to say make great coffee or how to how to uh, you know make a great recipe in a for, for with a certain product at home and these are 15 to 30 minute or the master classes being done uh, on instagram live so there are uh, categories like food and chef were major beauty and grooming uh, i think without uh, without having to say is one of the largest categories uh fashion again is a is a is a humongous category in terms of the number of people uh, who fall within it one of the newer categories that we've seen evolve is regional so there is suddenly uh, a huge splurge of people uh, who create regional content and a lot of brands are today looking to connect with audiences in their regional language so we're creating content for example in tamil telugu malayalam punjabi so on and so forth and brands want to connect uh with influencers who can connect to their audiences ahead in uh, in the local dialect so this is something that we've seen happening at a huge uh, at a huge rate and uh i think some of you who are leading brands uh, who have tier 2 tier 3 audiences should definitely uh look at regional audiences uh, as one of the spaces uh celebrities of course have been there uh, since time forever so i think they're at the top of the pyramid they're still a great part uh, of many influencer campaigns but uh i think the whole influencer evolution is a lot more than just celebrities and a lot more about covering the entire uh, pyramid of influencers uh i think another category that's interesting is uh, is wellness 
uh, wellness has a has a huge engagement as a category wellness uh, impacts commerce for a lot of brands uh, in the health space health being already a huge space so uh, we see a lot of brands in the who have a, a health aspect uh, from food uh, fmcg uh fitness companies uh, so on and so forth uh, look for wellness influencers even tea companies uh, so to say uh but largely these are the categories we can talk more about any particular category if you'd like uh, later so these are some of the formats in which we've seen influencer campaigns happen so these are some of the objectives that brands try to drive from influencer campaigns so either it is ugc creation UGC creation is essentially uh, fair. So, as a company, we have a network of about fourteen odd million influencers today. Uh, about two and a half million out of them are in India. Uh, these are spread across uh, across platforms. Uh, so, these are uh, these influencers are present on Instagram, on YouTube, uh, on on TikTok, so on and so forth, and cover the whole pyramid from nano influencers to celebrities. And what brands today try to do. uh in the traditional sense they used to go to an agency uh, a production house try to create you know 10 pieces of content 20 pieces of content which would take months today with influencers uh, being able to create such high quality content at such high speed brands have started leveraging influencers for sometimes not influencer marketing but just uh, content creation content sourcing so for uh, for example recently i don't know how many of you use swiggy uh but if you went to their platform they've launched a new portal wherein they're uh, posting a lot of recipe content uh, that you can engage with that entire content was created by us uh, in merely 2 to 3 days uh to via influencers uh, tons of brands today are doing content creation via influencers awareness uh, launches so anything uh, any launch that's happening for a new product for a new service awareness of any existing service uh pushing a contest or something is something that's to, that's always being done through influencers engagement is another i think key way of uh, for a lot of uh, brands who who have a massive uh, awareness funnel but don't have so much uh, engagement or loyalty with the brand or brands who are trying to have more uh, relatability to their audiences so the way uh, this is different from an awareness is that for the same amount of money invested we will look for influencers who will engage the audiences more the as opposed to who will provide more reach that's one uh, so engagement campaigns will lead to uh, more uh, more more conversations as opposed to more number of uh, more number of eyeballs that's uh, that's i think largely going to be one part engagement campaigns will also see more conversion as opposed to more awareness campaigns so awareness campaigns will see like millions of people looking at a campaign for the same amount of money while engagement will see lesser people watching it but more sales or conversion or action uh, on the campaign i think another huge thing that we've uh, another huge area that we've started to see lately is it advocacy slash long term deals so uh, in the past influencers were all about you know uh, posting of a single brand a single video and then moving to the next brand and the other and i think one of the biggest questions that was also asked by most uh, by most critics was how are these people really advocates of the brand because they keep posting about tons of brands all the time so i think one of the uh, shifts we have seen in the industry is that today brands and both influencers want to engage in long term partnerships these partnerships can range from 3 month partnerships to about a year or so uh, but the idea for brands is that hey if i work with you i will not just come in with you for say a single content piece or a single video or a single post but let's partner up for say at least 3 months or 6 months or a year and you become an advocate a true advocate of my brand so this in turn one helps brands get a lower cost because the partnerships are longer uh, gets uh, higher impact because the audience of the influencer actually believes in the uh, influencer advocating the brand uh, and i think it also takes away that uh that critic uh, that critical part where people question whether influencers are really uh, you know they whether they really believe in the brand or not when they when they associate with a brand for long term uh virality is another i think huge area that's cropped up so a lot of brands today want to go viral you must have all seen uh, detol uh, hand wash challenge uh one of the recent campaigns we led was for mpl gaming which was which garnered about 75 odd million views uh with about 70 odd influencers uh, in a, in a mix of tiktok uh, and instagram but virality essentially is where brands really want to take a message a campaign a step uh, anything that they feel uh, creates huge audience 
uh, relatability or just recall of the brand uh, viral. Uh, we've seen TikTok innately to be a viral platform. So I think TikTok is a great place if the audience, if, if there's an audience match for you uh, to go viral and then sort of pick on that viral virality back to Instagram uh, as well, which is something you've done multiple times for uh, brands now. Uh, but Instagram itself, again, is a independently huge platform for creating virality. Uh, as a thumb rule, uh, just to give you context uh, for pricing as well, so for the same amount of money invested on Instagram and for the same amount of reach, if you want to, if you want to garner on a TikTok, we'll see the cost to be about uh, half of what you get on Instagram. And if you're trying to go to YouTube for the same amount of reach, we've seen the cost to be about three to four times more than Instagram. Uh, so I think when you choose a platform, it's very important. Uh, it's a very important decision because otherwise the numbers you're aiming for, the audience you're targeting completely changes and, and, and what you can take out of your budget, the impact is going to completely change for you. Reviews is another huge uh, uh, area for brands. So beauty brands again, uh, all technology consumer brands again, anything that requires consumers to, uh, to you know, take a uh, thought after call. So mobiles people think about before buying a mobile. Uh, women are very interested in understanding how the beauty product uh, uh, impacts them. But fashion, you wouldn't see a lot of reviews. Uh, so for certain categories, review videos work wonderfully well. They lead to action, they lead to sales, uh, they lead to uh, more brand loyalty, uh, so on and so forth. So I think uh, as if you're a consumer brand where you're trying to capture the bottom of your funnel into a converted, into a, into a customer for the first time or you're uh, trying to make an existing customer more loyal to you. Reviews is a great way uh, for you to engage in. Uh, again, YouTube and Instagram work very differently for reviews. Instagram is much shorter in content. YouTube is much longer in the form the content works. But uh, largely, reviews in itself is a great uh, way to uh, convert your customers at large. Uh, advocacy is what you've seen with communities like GoPro wherein uh, they have about you know 150 200 500 odd advocates who they partner up uh, with and these people are constantly whether uh, whether they are whether it's part of a campaign or whether without a campaign they'll always keep talking about the brand you'll see uh, people advocating uh, advocating one plus all the time some of the photographers advocating one plus all the time so it's essentially building a community of uh, influencer advocates for yourself uh, who consistently speak about you in every picture they take, in everything they do, who, who really, you know, where it becomes very hard for you to differentiate whether uh, they are an influencer or a true advocate uh, at large. Uh, traffic, again, is one of, one of the goals that a lot of technology companies or a lot of consumer brands drive from uh, perspective of sales to so a lot of uh, companies try to drive traffic to, say, their own website or to the Amazon portal or to say an app, so on and so forth, wherein they'd want to take users uh, into action and essentially want to lead to more downloads, lead to more say paid users. Uh, YouTube is a great place to drive traffic. Instagram uh, can be tricky. It can or cannot lead to traffic depending on how uh, smartly you choose your influencers and how uh, good the match is. Uh, and it's also a little tricky from Instagram because there's no directly uh, clickable link that can take you uh, somewhere so but youtube is a great place to drive traffic uh, content seeding is typically where brands partner with new categories that they've not explored uh, and try to seed content with influencers uh, in to so as to reach audiences they've not reached before so for example for a again for an fmc for a beauty brand again typically while they start off with working with beauty influencers over time they also want to reach out to say uh, they'll want to associate with uh, health uh, influencers or, uh, or or generally or let's just say uh, experimental influencers who are you know who are possibly doing experimental stuff and these are categories or audiences they've not reached to before so they'll just want to seed content uh, through their uh, through their social handles regional growth like i said uh, has become one of the most interesting uh, areas so fmcg largely is looking at a lot of regional growth uh, vernacular platforms or companies that do uh, regional uh, work are looking at a lot of regional growth. Uh, so one of the major FMCGs we are working with uh, has which spends over I think about 500 odd crores on marketing in your uh, 
uh, one of the reasons they've picked us as a partner is because we are able to help them provide regional growth, which is very core to the way they grow their business. Uh, amplification is a is an objective wherein brands try to push an already existing campaign. If something's going well for brands and they want to push it further, uh, they come to us and say, "Hey, let's amplify the campaign." Masterclasses, like I just said, is a new concept. It's a it's a high engagement model wherein I think the eyeballs are going to be much lesser. The engagement's going to be much. Uh, longer and deeper. If you'd seen an academy recently did a master class with Virat Kohli and Anushka Sharma. So brands are doing master classes at last today, especially after COVID. Uh, Instagram Live uh, has increased tremendously where master classes are happening. Uh, so huge opportunity for brands to create this as a uh, intellectual property in itself and 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 create a very engaged community wherein they can teach people certain skill sets about their and include their products or certain recipes, certain uh, anything and everything, uh, any expertise that they want to sell, uh, any courses they want to talk about from an edtech perspective. Pinterest setup is, uh, is, is an objective wherein we're helping brands leverage Pinterest. It's a very early stage program, so still very experimental in nature. Uh, global program, so we helped Marico uh, launch parachute oil in East Africa, including uh, Kenya, Ethiopia, Tanzania, then we helped him launch another beauty brand in US, uh, New Zealand, Australia, uh, then another in Malaysia. Uh, we work with a brand called Vadam Tees. Uh, they're, they're, they're one of the most endorsed uh, brands uh, with Indian origin and have about 97 or sales in the US. We did a massive campaign for them uh, in the United States. They're endorsed by uh, Oprah Winfrey there. So, ma so one of the things we're able to do for brands is that we're able to take them from a certain, from say just India and take them around the world, whichever countries they want to go in, just owing to the fact that we have a very global uh, ecosystem of influencers uh, within the company. Uh, so a lot of brands today are trying to find for, look for solutions that can help them take global or uh, a lot of companies that are trying to make an India sell abroad, so on and so forth. Brand ambassador is a very, uh, I think in the traditional sense of getting a major celebrity or a, or a large in category influencer as uh, as a face of the brand. Uh, I, I think the other ones, uh, other uh, objectives are more specific to certain categories. But I think the one objective I like to speak about is IP creation, wherein a lot of brands today are trying to create uh, intellectual properties with influencers, co-create those uh, intellectual property and say work on revenue share models or a base fee plus revenue share model. So if you're a company, uh, that she that that is creating intellectual properties, or you know, if you're a music uh, product, or so on and so forth. What you can do is you can create partner with influencers and in, in models where there's a base fee associated, uh, and then there's a revenue share associated, and co-create intellectual properties with them. This could really help you grow the way uh, the way your business looks like and your PNL looks like. Uh, another interesting concept here, influencer ads, which has largely uh, recently taken uh, grown tremendously is uh, brands using influencers and their content to push for ads. So we've seen about two and a half times more conversion on ads when brands use influencer content and also influencer handles uh, or, uh, or uh, the way, better way to put it would be that influencers who push uh, their own content via ads for different brands. We've seen that to be about two, two and a half times more efficient as opposed to traditional performance ads. Uh, a lot of brands today are also sourcing content from us created by our influencers just so they can use that content for influ for running performance ads because they see a lot of value being driven or a lot of, uh, a lot of cost reduction uh, when they use influencer content for ads. Again, I think as a platform, uh, some of the things that we're able to provide, but I... Uh, but I think uh, some of the other discovery platforms, if you use, might be able to provide you some, uh, some of these filters. So I think it's important to look at the audience base of the influencer and not just the uh, followers. You need to look at uh, where the audiences live. You need to look at the engagement rates. It's a great benchmark. Uh, interestingly for YouTube, we've really observed that there's no correlation between subscribers and views. So the metric that we look for in YouTube is average views of an influencer as opposed to subscribers, which we have seen to be uh, of almost no correlation, no correlation to performance. Uh, audience gender matters to a lot of brands depending on the category of the brand. Uh, so a lot of brands would want to work with couples, with males, with females, with community pages. Uh, community pages could include companies like Humans of Bombay. I'm sure a lot of you follow them. Uh, have a, they have a massive reach, a massive impact. 
uh, we've seen them that a single post from a humans of bombay like community has led to transactions of more than 30 lakhs which is amazing uh, again uh, an audience age is very important for a lot of brands it's important that uh, they pick influencers who have the right audience age uh, i think today most of the brands are working with influencers just sheerly based on the number of followers or subscribers uh, and a little bit of engagement rate but it's very important to understand that uh, it's important to it's it's better to reach a million people who are your audiences than 5 million people who are not your audience so it's important to pick your influencers wisely uh so this is a this is the process we follow for roi maximization so a lot of, i think one of the most touted questions in influencer marketing is how do we maximize roi of an influencer campaign uh the way we see this is uh, it's a four step process very simple process uh some of you who are running your influencer campaigns by yourself within the company can use this uh, as a process and it and and, I, and i'm sure this will help you uh, improve the numbers uh, tremendously so i think the first part to the puzzle is picking the right platform we've seen tons of brands come to us and running campaigns on platforms that are not right for them in the first place or putting all the money in a single platform without experimenting the with the other one which could be highly effective for that category so it's important that you understand whether instagram's the right platform you, for you or whether youtube is or whether uh, tiktok is uh, interestingly we've seen huge huge uh, customer acquisition for the mato from tiktok via influencer campaigns this is something even we didn't believe could happen but uh but i think that experiment panned out really well so uh, i think experiment with your money a little bit on new platforms uh, experiment with the right category of influencers so i think uh, the second part of the puzzle is influencer selection uh, where most brands again go wrong so uh, even if you've picked the right platform as long as you don't pick the right uh, select the right influencers you want to work with it won't really lead to an impact so brands think i think sometimes followers versus cost is the right metric that hey i'm getting you know the lowest cost with so many followers we don't think so that really works first is to understand the category of influencers you want to work with or categories uh, that are associated with your brand and also the fact that followers is not again the right metric so uh, a luxury influencer on instagram with just about 50 or 1000 followers might be charging you the same amount of money that a fashion influencer with half a million might and it makes sense if you think about a luxury influencer most of the people who are following them can possibly afford bmws or you know or, or possibly buy very high value ticket size uh, purchases mostly fashion influencers have audiences that are very young and do not have as much paying capacity so uh, it it only makes sense that while the number of eyeballs might be greater with the fashion influencer might not be addressing the same uh, audience and 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 might not be able to leverage the same amount of commerce or impact uh, for your brand so you need to understand which category of influencers is right for you uh, again i think the third part where brands go uh, wrong is content strategy uh, you can get your influencers right you can get your platform right but if you don't get your content right your campaigns again going to fall out so uh, should you be doing a so for example there are brands right uh, so one of the products we were recently looking at nescafe uh, for nescafe that that uh, that product for for nestle's brand that product does not have a search because people don't know that the product exists so if we start doing pictures about that product it's not really going to help us because the first thing that we have to do is create a need for the product because there is no need or uh, search about the product at all people don't know that a product like that can exist so the first thing to create is to create a top funnel of people looking for the product and videos come in very handy for new category creation for things that people don't know are there or can exist so Uh, understanding what to say in the content when to say in the content whether to do a photo whether to do a video whether to do a long video whether to do a short video uh, is very important for fashion pictures work because fashion is all about aesthetics and inspiration and it does not need, need a lot of explaining people do not buy fashion products because uh, you know there's a lot of reasoning to it people buy them because they look great and images just work so well so you need to understand your category and understand what content strategy would work for you Uh, again roll out strategy a lot of brands come to us and say hey how long is a campaign going to last would it be a month would it be two months and they'll be say just 20 influencers uh, and the question will be uh, can we do the campaign spread over a month uh, we typically would say hey let's do it over a week and let's just roll it out uh, in 3 days and they'll be like oh do i spend the entire money in 3 days we we say yes because we've seen that some of the most exciting or most impactful campaigns have happened because they were 
planned right because the rollout was planned right so the campaign for mpl we were aiming for just about 30 odd million views wherein we garnered about 75 odd million views and that happened because the campaign was rolled out at the right time the right days which was a weekend uh, it's a great time for people to be entertained people have extra time on hand it was a dance step uh, it, the entire campaign rolled out over a fri- over friday and saturday uh, and and picked on to sunday uh, itself uh, more than 15000 organic pieces of content were submitted by users just to follow that dance step so i think uh, spreading your campaign too wide is not going to help because in the larger scheme of social noise your campaign will probably just get lost and you need to be smart enough about picking that hey uh, i i need to capture the user's attention i, I think one of the uh, theories that i try to explain people uh, this simply with is that if i'm sure a lot, everybody of you has seen billboards billboards on the road right so uh, at least pre covid you've seen that uh, and you'll see that the same brand uh, will take four billboards in a row in the same space the idea for the brand is to get a very very strong attention and recall of the brand uh, with the people who are looking at the billboards if if all the four billboards in the row were four different brands probably none of them would be able to take attention this is the same theory that applies here so it's important that your campaign is seen again and again by users so as to create that recall and that strong attraction to the campaign rather than creating a single content today and then letting people forget it uh, i've laid down the process of influencer selection uh, it it happens in a it happens in a seven step process so the first part uh, when you select influencers is picking which is the core platform so while you might in, want influencers who are also present on say instagram influencers who are also present on facebook and uh, youtube you need to understand whether the core is in uh, the instagram influencer or the youtube influencer or you're also looking for both uh, separately the step two after you've selected say hey i'm looking for influencers on instagram who also have other social presence i am looking for say photographers or say beauty influencers uh, or say fitness influencers uh, the third part to that uh, after you've identified the category is to look at a brand match so the idea is to see whether the influencers aesthetic sense quality of content does match with the uh, with the brand that you have so for a lot of cases influencers get rejected merely due to the fact that the influencers aesthetics and, and and quality of the profile just doesn't go with the brand even if the audience might sometimes be right but it the brand does not want to stand uh, for for representing that influencer uh, the fourth is again content filtering so for example if you're doing videos uh, a lot of mis- brands make mistakes where they'll get videos done from an influencer who's just good at creating photo content and some influencers are just not so great with say uh, videos or going live and it's important to pick those who are great in creating the type of content that you want to create that might limit your choices but the impact's going to be a lot more after all influencer marketing is content marketing and if you get the content wrong nothing's going to happen uh, again logistics is swift so if you're a technology app i think logistics is not going to matter to you in most cases because uh, the influencer can simply download the product or use the platform and and create content around it but say if you're a ac uh, if you're a ac company you'll have to think about how do i uh, uh, which are the influencers who can readily access my ac and create content in the timeline of the campaign that you have uh, logistics could mean uh, you know looking at the time looking at the delivery or availability of your product zone and so forth of an influencer uh, then i think after you've narrowed down this pool basis logistics and all the other five steps uh, and whatever pool you have left then it comes down to budget optimization that hey these are the 500 uh, people you know who match all the criteria but i only have about 5 lakhs to spend and i can only work with 20 and then you start picking on the ones basis your objective you look for say if you're maximizing for awareness you will pick for ones who are least cost and maximum reach if you're looking for engagement you'll pick for ones who have uh, say least cost versus maximum engagement or maximum uh, number of comments they get on their uh, on on the content they create so on and so forth so the idea is to take budget and goal together and basis the goal you uh, and basis the budget you'll need to create a healthy mix of people who can lead you to the objectives that you're uh, trying to reach to uh, but fundamentally if you get this right uh, we've seen as long as your influencers are right in a in a campaign uh, your campaign is you know 50 to 60% more 
uh, secure than it otherwise was. Because if your influences are wrong, you can get everything else right. You can get the best rollout strategy. You can get the best uh, content strategy. You can get the right platform. But as long as your influences are wrong, uh, your campaign is not really going to lead anywhere. Uh, so briefly about, so I'm uh, going to sort of uh, quickly run you through the things that I have. Uh, so data, I think, uh, so, uh, so the, so I think one impression strength lies in data and the way we analyze data. So this is a uh, shot of how data looks like for every influencer in the company. While we've taken Priyanka jo, uh, Chopra, just because all of you are, uh, can relate to it, but we can find the same level of, uh, influencer data for every influencer over a reach of thousand followers. So we know uh, how the followers look like. We know this, uh, we know how much of the, how much the paid content performs. We know what are the average likes and average numbers of comments, et cetera, et cetera. We can look at audience credibility, which is how many uh, of the people engaging with the content of a certain influencer are also credible and not bots. Uh, notable likes is again, very interesting. So while a photographer might just have about five or thousand followers, we've seen that some of them end up having a lot of Bollywood following them because they're Bollywood photographers. And all of those people following them are highly notable. Uh, are people like say Virat Kohli or, or other celebrities, so on and so forth. So the value of the photographer is not in the 5,000 followers. It's in the quality of the following. And, uh, and I think notable uh, followers and likes is what helps us understand that. I think other some key other metrics include uh, your uh, age and gender split. So we can look at, hey, how many people between age 20, 18 to 24 are women? So 34% uh, are women, 13.5% uh, are men, so on and so forth. We can look at uh, where do the people live? So we can look at Mumbai as being the top city where influencer has its audience. Uh, this helps us narrow down to influencers uh, with minimum spillage. So while we can't have influencers who have no spillage at all, we can always have influencers who have the maximum reach in a certain location, in a certain we can filter them basis audience in a certain age group, uh, in a certain country, so on and so forth. Uh, and these are some other stats like, hey, who are, the, who are precisely those notable people. So you can see Priyanka Chopra is being followed by, say, an Alia Bhatt, Deepika Padugona, Gigi Hadid, David Beckham, so on and so forth, which is the value that she might drive. You can, it is still easy to understand for a Priyanka Chopra, but if you were to understand this for a photographer with 5,000 followers, manually, it's something that's completely impossible. Uh, Moving on to the next slide. So again, uh, Bombay Shaving Company was the first client for the company. It's we worked with them now today for about three plus uh, years since the day the company started. Uh, this is one of the Valentine's Day campaigns we did for them. Uh, picked uh, a handful of influencers who would. So for Bombay Shaving, gifting is a huge uh, gifting is a huge space. So for any occasions. Uh, like these for Father's Day, for Valentine's Day, we do uh, create interesting content with influencers. Uh, for Detol, uh, we, uh, we, so Mothers is a very interesting community. We've seen that a lot of FMCG brands, a lot of uh, beauty brands also uh, engage with because mothers are essentially the decision makers of all the, all the money that's uh, invested by a home uh across the country so we've seen tons of brands work with mothers and it all again uh, being a household product wanted to associate with mothers who are also celebrities so uh, they're promoting uh, they're promoting one of their uh, newer products uh, so these are some of the content that we created uh, mama arts again one of uh, happens to be one of our key clients uh, barkha singh karishma tanna uh, two uh, major celebrities in the uh, in the in their own categories uh, so Barkha Singh is doing a YouTube video uh, talking about Mama's hair oil. Karishma Tanna again is talking about the skin products. Uh, this is for a brand called M Caffeine. Uh, M Caffeine is a more inspiration-led brand because uh, it's coffee products. It's more uh, they're great to look at. They're great to apply. It's a more picturesque as a brand. So Instagram is uh, a major space for them to invest in. And they and I, I'm sure if you're on Instagram, you would have seen M Caffeine because. For them, we almost collaborate with every influencer who's who, who's matching their uh, audience and all the other filters that we look for. Uh, very, very broadly, I think I've spoken about one impression at large during my PPT uh, and how we, you know, collaborate with different brands. But the reason brands come to us uh, are, are, are one or multiple amongst these reasons. So one, we have a huge network size, both in India and globally, which is 14 million plus odd people across uh, the network is across platforms. 
so they come to us because we can do youtube we can do instagram we can work with uh pinterest we can work with tiktokers we can work with share chat influencers so on and so forth uh the campaigns are completely managed so we are a single point of contact for them and they don't have to do uh, any hassle uh, apart from talking to us uh, the entire content strategy is done by uh, by a team of experts uh content like i said is a major part of how brands win their campaigns uh, you can reach out to the same influencers yourself but if you get the content right you might not be able to uh, create a lasting campaign and the reason brands again come to us is because we understand uh, what has worked for different categories owing to the fact that we work with so many brands today uh again impact uh, because we have all the processes sorted for roi maximization uh, we have an experience of tons of brands with some partnerships like pinterest and our turnaround time is extremely low we are able to get a campaign live even even in a day's time if needed although we recommend about 3 to 4 days of planning time if you're launching a campaign uh, also the fact that we uh, help them access the entire pyramid from nano influencers to celebrities so one of the largest campaigns we've done with micro and nano influencers is with about 8 or 1000 influencers in 10 odd languages for one of the leading platforms and celebrity campaigns of course happen uh, all the time with brands like pubg so on and so forth uh some of our clients uh, including marico amazon big basket uh, bata mamart pinterest tiktok so on and so forth uh and uh, and yeah and that's me thank, thank you very much bye bye bye